The new Talk Radio 1450 WCTC, the voice of Central Jersey. Ask the doctor with Dr. Derek De Silva. Call 732-545-9282. 732-545-WCTC. Well, good morning, Central Jersey. How are you today? Great to have you with me. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, it is a pleasure to sit in and spend part of my Saturday morning with you. And yes, I am live in the studio today. It is the 23rd day of July, and it is a scorcher. It is a scorcher. Be careful out there today. If you're going outside, make sure you hydrate. For those of you folks that like to exercise, please don't do it at noon because you'll probably pass out and you will get yourself into trouble. You do it early in the morning or later on in the after later on in the evening, all right? You hear that all the time. Just going to reinforce that to you today. It is a pleasure to have in studio with me, sitting right here next to me, is Anna Dieter. I've known Anna and her husband for quite some time now. Anna, how long have I? Four years? Five years? Is yeah, something like about that. About that, yeah. right? Anna is a speech educator. She works with folks that stutter. How many of you know someone that stutters? I remember growing up, one of my cousins used to stutter, stutter very badly. And I remember children in school stuttering. So, Anna, by the way, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining me. (laughs) Thank you so much. Pleasure to have you here. Tell me a little bit about, and you have something really interesting to read that you wanted to do first. So go right ahead. Go ahead yes, and do that. Yes. I just wanted to read the beginning of my new book that I just published. It's called A Tale of Two Geniuses in Stuttering. How one Russian genius invented and the other one debunked the false stuttering disease. Once upon a time, in the air of troubles, they lived on earth two geniuses. One was evil and the other one was good. One profited from deception. The other earned an honest living. They didn't know each other as the first one lived a hundred years earlier than the second. Evil genius lied. I have discovered a dangerous disease. It is called a stuttering. Patients cannot speak on their own. They need a cure that medical science has yet to find. In the meantime, until it has been found, stutterers require someone's constant assistance, a medical crutch, as they are not capable of walking independently. So let me stop you there. Yes. There are 70 million people that stutter. Yes. In this, it, it, that's a worldwide. According to the official statistics, in my estimations, the number is much, much higher. So what is the problem when it comes to stuttering? The problem is that stuttering medical condition doesn't exist. It's someone's fantasy, speculation, hypothesis that's been done, actually, At the end of 19th century, I know the details, how, when, who invented this. So Um, is it a – are you saying that this is a – that stuttering is a disease? I mean, it's not a disease, is it? No, it's not. It's not a disease. It's not an illness. It's not any medical problem. This is a simple speech underdevelopment due to a person's – lack of experience working with his own speech muscles. And it can happen at any age. When a person stops speaking, a child may stop speaking, stop developing his speech skills, or an adult after some event that could have caused his memory become erased. So it's lack of experience, training, working your own speech muscles. That's what stuttering is. Speech muscles. Yes. What are speech muscles? Speech muscles, believe it or not, there are just only two groups of muscles. I like to say your tongue and your bottom lip. That's it. Nothing else. And I can prove it in a very simple way. Like imagine some beautiful speaker 
lost his tongue for some reason, right? The tongue got cut off. Will this speaker be able to speak ever? Maybe he needs to do breathing exercises. Maybe he needs to do relaxation exercises. Mm -hmm. Will he be able to speak ever? Probably not. <laughs> of because course. you do need to have, you know, uh, and I don't know the exact mechanics of how the tongue works and how that works, but I do know that if you hold your tongue, uh -huh. you cannot talk. That's right. That's right. And this is exactly what people who stutter do. They hold their tongue, but they do even worse. They push their tongue against their surfaces in their mouth. And this is how they simply close the door for the voice to come out. And your voice is you. Your voice is your soul. This is your energy. And if you close the hole that you have here, your mouth, with your tongue pushing against any surfaces in your mouth, how are you going to allow your voice to come out? My guest this morning is Anna Dieter. She's a speech educator. We're speaking a little bit about stuttering. Do you know anybody that stutters? Did you go to school with somebody that stuttered? Do you stutter? Is there a family member that you know? Our number is 732-545-9282. Once again, 732-545-9282 is our phone number. I, I remember, Anna, growing up, as I said to you in my introduction, my cousin, my one cousin, his name was Chris, uh, stuttered very badly, and I know he got over it. I don't know what he did, but he was a couple of years older than me, and I had somebody in, in my class with me when I was in grade school that stuttered. I don't hear that as much anymore. Has, it, has the incidence decreased? Oh, no. The incidents actually have increased. There are a lot of people. They start in their childhood. Whenever a child is um, made aware that there is something wrong with him or her, they simply stop speaking. They stop developing their speech skills. And, for example, in case of your cousin, you said, I don't know what he did. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. He kept speaking. Mm -hmm. He kept developing his speech skills, and he got over it. When parents come to me and tell me, Anna, what should I do? My child is three years old or my child is four years old, and he's a stutterer. I go like, how could a child so young be a stutterer? He simply is making his first steps in learning to speak. He's developing his speech skills. And what do young children do when they begin learning to walk? What do they do? First they thing fall they down do, once in that's a while. it. Right. <laughs> so this is natural. Every child makes mistakes when he or she begins learning to speak. This is natural. This is not stuttering. This is simple lack of adult speech skills. Let me ask you this. My grandson, mm -hmm. who is 10 months old, my son, uh, actually his, his wife, has, is starting to teach my grandson a little bit of sign language. So that's not a good idea, is mm. it? Because they need to be able to speak I, and I noticed that yesterday, and I thought to myself, why are you doing that when you actually should be encouraging him to speak? That's not a good idea. Learning sign language. Sign, what is sign language? Sign language is the way we express ourselves using different parts of our body. It's a muscle training, but it's a different muscle training. I mean, when you sign, you use your muscles of your hands. Mm -hmm. You learn how to express yourself in moving your hands. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same thing you can do teaching your child to express himself moving his tongue. Right. You know what? And I thought about this yesterday because we were in Good. the pool. Good thinking. We were in the pool, and I'm thinking to myself, why, why are they doing that? Because this is a crutch that... Conventional, unfortunately, conventional speech professionals mm, promote. I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to be with them today. Yes. And, you know, I hate to say this, but, you know, it, it's, 
I'm going to have a conversation with them because I know how important speech is. It's everything. My mother sent me to elocution classes when I was seven years old. I mean, I didn't have a speech problem. She just knew that my mouth would get me in trouble one day. <laughs> and she also told me that your mouth is going to be your savior. That's so right. So I want to make sure that you know how to use your mouth. And that's exactly what my mother said to me. Because, you know, this whole thing, uh, the ability to communicate, and I think today, with children especially, with using all the devices oh and things God. like that. Don't even start me on that. I think that is going to be open up a whole can of worms. Folks, we need to take a little break. We'll be back with you in just a bit. If you'd like to join us, we're at 732-545-9282. Outside the 732 area code, you can put an 888 before that and 545-9282. I'm Dr. Derek DeSilva, back with you in just a bit. Welcome back, Central Jersey. Once again, thank you very much for joining us. I am here with you live and in person the 23rd j day of July. It is a scorcher outside. I Just be careful out there. I hope you en you're enjoying this lovely weather. I, I know a lot of you don't like it. I do. You know I love this wonderful hot weather. I'm in studio today with Anna Dieter. She is a speech educator, and we're talking about stuttering. Now, so what's your – I know you, you teach a course. You, you, you do some treatments with these folks that stutter. What, what, what is it that you do with them? Okay, number one, I don't do any treatments because I'm, a not, I'm not a doctor. Okay. Treatment is a medical term in my understanding. So what I do, I am a speech educator. I am a teacher. I do exactly what every teacher does in the classroom. I demonstrate the correct way of performing any muscle action. Of course, it's a speech uh, action. And then I watch my student to imitate, to copy the correct speech action. That's all. Which is what? Which is a simple movement of your tongue. <laughs> Every speaker, believe it or not, that's the only thing we do when we produce speech. We move our tongue and the bottom lip, which is a kind of, we call it continuation of the tongue, outside continuation of the tongue. Nothing else needs to be moved in your mouth when you speak. What about the muscles around the face and the jaw? Do they play a role? No, they don't. If they did, then we wouldn't be able to, I mean, listen how robots speak. They don't have facial expression. They speak in a monotone voice. They don't make mistakes. Technically, our any muscles should not be involved in speaking. But, yeah, it is a cultural thing. Of course, we do have different facial expressions. But mm -hmm. it doesn't actually affect any quality of speech. So the education that you do, your, your students, what, what results... What outcomes have you had? I am going to say the word that drives a lot of people nuts because I'm going to use the number 100% <laughs> because every time you do anything in the way Mother Nature created us, it cannot be wrong. It just cannot. Everything my students do is they follow the natural laws, the way Mother Nature created us, and it is never wrong. This is why it's 100% success. Every time I teach more or less severe stutters, they drop their stuttering right in front of my eyes, and they become normal speakers. So this speech education takes how long? Okay, the course is three days. But recently, we've gone already to the level of explaining the educational material in only one, two hours after this short time, adults, of course, I'm not talking about children. Children takes, with children, it takes longer time. But with adults, they understand that most of the speech actions they used to perform, they were against nature. They were doing very irrational actions of their body. No wonder they stuttered. Like They what? stumbled. For example, they would push their tongue. They would raise their tongue in their mouth, push it 
against their heart palate or against their top the teeth. Of them, right, the roof of their yeah, mouth. the roof right. of their mouth. Top teeth. And they would close the door, shut the door for their energy for the voice to come out. And they would wonder, hmm, how come I cannot say the word? How come I'm saying only one initial sound? How come I'm repeating it? Of course, because they, when I look at my students and they go, like, for example, if you push the uh, bottom lip against the top lip, which is not natural, Mm -hmm. Mother Nature didn't create us in this way, what's going to happen? The energy will accumulate, the air will be accumulated in our body, in our mouth, I'm sorry, and like the tea kettle, if right. we close the little hole, <laughs> true, okay, true. the steam is going to come out, the pressure will going to increase, but unfortunately, nothing is going to come out because the hole is closed. So this is a very irrational, non-correct speech action that most people who stutter perform. They close their mouth and attempt to speak. What about breathing? I mean, you just talked a little bit about breathing, oh, right? Yes. I mean, that's... I know that's I know, another crutch. Well, I know for myself before I when I'm doing TV, when I'm doing radio, I always take a nice deep breath before I speak, because if you don't breathe, why are you shaking your hand and waving <laughs> your finger at me? Why doesn't that make any sense? It doesn't make sense. I mean, I understand why it works for you. But when you take a breath. What do you do at this moment? No, not when I'm speaking. I understand. I take a before. breath before I speak. That's right. So what? try to do this. Don't breathe. Just take a pause. What do you do at this moment? You think of a word that you want to say. It is not that you breathe that helps. It's just simple moment of silence. When you go to your memory and you select the correct word, this is what I teach my students. The pause that they run away, they, they're just afraid of pauses. But this is natural. Oh, Bef- no, 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 I agree with you. I Before agree you, with you say something, your tongue is brainless. It doesn't have any information. You need to know what to say. I understand. What I'm saying is, is that when you, if, when I speak, I pause. Yes. I take pauses. That's why you're that a beautiful is, speaker. And it's very important to take those pauses. Yes. A, 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 instead of stuttering, I mean, instead instead of, da, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. It's better to shut up and just pause right. and then move on. Yes. But what I'm talking about is something of whether it be a relaxation, whether it be a breath to catch your, to, to let your brain catch up. Or if I have to read something that's long, I need to be doing that in one breath. Okay. This is a very important point you brought up. Breathing is the most natural action of our body. We do not do anything, do not need to do anything to breathe properly. Mother Nature has done everything for us. Just, you know what, look at this little analogy. If you order yourself to stop breathing and dive in the water, like be Mm -hmm. under the water, close your nose, close your mouth, and try not to breathe. You can do it for some time. Mm -hmm. But eventually you will begin breathing because this is not up to your mind. This is up to your body, which is, of course, much older than your mind. So breathing is natural action of your body. It's automatic. Okay, speech is a skill that needs to be learned. So if how do people get in touch with you? Do you have a website? Oh, of course. What I have a do? beautiful website. I just had a nice facelift of my website. Okay. <laughs> That's <laughs> a looks, good word to use. That's right. Okay. So it's a beautiful website. It is www.livestutterfree.com. So it's www.livestutterfree.com. And phone number, or it's the best thing to do is just go to the website? Website is good, but there is a phone number as well for U.S. It's 323-896-1214. Say that one more time, a little bit slower. Okay. Yes, sir. 323-896-1214.
LiveStutterFree.com is your website. And you now when you say U.S. number, you see people from all over the world. I see people from all over the world. This is incredible. I work every day with different languages because, believe it or not, people who speak some African dialect or some Swahili language, they have the same structure of their mouth. Sure. <laughs> there is no difference. Yeah, there's no difference in the tongue uh-uh. and the mouth. It uh-uh. doesn't matter where you're born. <laughs> hey, Anna, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure to have you here in the studio. One more time, your website and your phone number. Okay, my website is www.livestarterfree.com and the number is 323 Eight nine six one two one four, just like my birthday. Very good, <laughs> folks. Thank you very much for joining me. God bless you all. Have a great week, and until next time, I'm Dr. Derek De Silva, and may you always be blessed with good health.